a while back, we were thinking, you know what, maybe the Lord's leading to, to do the same thing that other missionaries here do and start some kind of a school or ministry center out in the province, out in the rural, out in the countryside. So helping, helping poor children, it sounds pretty amazing and pretty rewarding and fulfilling. Maybe that's what the Lord's leading to do. So I started prayerfully to kind of go out and start scouting for sites where we could maybe consider doing that. And in the travels on the motorbike out through the province, out through the countryside and the dirt roads and everything, I stopped at this hardware store. And a guy walked out and he said, I know you already from Facebook. And he said, uh, you don't need to share your testimony with me again. You already shared it. Long story short, it's the, it's the son of a pastor who has a struggle with same-sex attraction. And I had reached out to him, had been connected through another pastor to him, had reached out to him already so he knew who I was from Facebook and, and I had no idea. So it was like going out into the middle of, of nowhere and wandering into the sky. It had to be the Lord, hands down. It's what we already do as part of our daily life as the Lord leads, is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, wherever we are. Hill, hills in the distance, mountains in the distance. The idea here, the goal here, the objective here is to go out and share the gospel, to obey the Great Commission, Mark 16, 15, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're all commanded as Christians to do that. And secondly, because of our, our mission and our, uh, our calling related to the LGBT and those who struggle with same-sex attraction, we would like to drop by churches along the way. And we would like to make ourselves available, make ourselves a resource to churches so that um, we can, Lord willing, be of some use to those who are trying to reach out or have folks in their congregation who struggle with same-sex attraction and gender identity. Praise the Lord. Cambodia is so beautiful and such a blessing, such a privilege to serve the Lord here. Praise God. So at that time when I stopped at that hardware store and, and met the pastor's son, and we were talking, kind of a group of us there, we were saying, hey, what about a ministry center? Is there anywhere around here you would recommend? And just kind of making conversation. And someone said the name of a town, a very rural town. So today is kind of an, an effort to, to better document what we already do in, in these video blogs. So I came back here, kind of mapped the route out and sharing the gospel and sharing testimony, what the Lord's done for me to deliver me from, from my old life. And so mapped out that and then came up here on the motorbike today and to the left I saw a road that led to that same town that I was told to go to back several months ago in the hardware store. I thought I'm going to take that road so I went that way, got in there. Typically if we're looking to witness to LGBT folks, folks that have a struggle with same-sex attraction, typically we look for a uh, clothing shop, hair beauty salon, kind of hair cutting place, and that sounds stereotypical, but that, that's a good way to find folks out in the countryside, whether it's in the U.S. or over here. It's a, a stereotype has to start somewhere, right? So that's what we do sometimes. And I stopped at a hair salon, like a, like a men's barber shop kind of thing. Stopped there, and, and the Lord led to share with the guys there. Praise the Lord. So one of them in the group seemed to maybe have a struggle, but I wasn't sure. The other ones didn't seem to, but I don't know. We try to stop short of judging just try to, to look for someone who's possible ministry, and one of them appeared to be. So I didn't share the depth of my testimony there because it was a mixed crowd out in the countryside, and you don't know how people are going to take it and that sort of thing. So typically, um, unless I'm really sure in the countryside, I would typically hold back on the full testimony and wait till a relationship is built. Turned around to head back toward home and came across this tailor shop. So I look out of the corner of my eye, there's a tailor shop go back and turn around go back and pull into the tailor shop and there were two guys there that also appeared to have a struggle and so sat down and they asked me to sit down and and started sharing with them they always ask where are you from so that's the opener and when you're a foreigner in a country like Cambodia they're very very kind to foreigners praise the Lord and want to know where are you from and and what are you doing here and all that sort of thing and so it's just a natural lead into testimony and 
And then testimony is often a natural lead into the gospel. Lord willing, there's an open door. So I started sharing with them, and just a few moments into it, not long into it, the the other guy from the salon pr- previously in the day rolled in with another guy. And so then it was four guys together plus me, and then a fifth a fifth one rolled in, uh, so five and six t- six all together. And so shared with with uh, the four before the the fifth one came in, but it was just perfect, praise the Lord, and only the Lord could make that happen. And how would I in any way know to go to to go to this very small place in the middle of the countryside? So I just left there praising the Lord with goosebumps and uh, just amazing how the Lord works. So the Lord leads our ministry. It's a little bit unusual. It's not a normal kind of ministry that you, you typically hear a missionary talking about, but the Lord leads very clearly. If we're willing to follow, he will, he will lead and make a way to the people that he wants us to speak with and share with. We have to be bold in this kind of ministry. It's not easy. Praise the Lord for fulfilling life, fulfilling ministry, the privilege to serve him. So we connected through Facebook, and Lord willing, there'll be opportunity for follow-up. We have scripture, typically weekly, in in Cambodian language, so that's part of the how we typically work from here on out. We can also, also, Lord willing, I will go back and take my wife with me at some point, even though it's a long, bumpy ride on the motorbike down down pretty rough roads. Hopefully, she'll go with me. They took it well, thank the Lord. Men in Cambodia tend to be more humble than, than they are back in the West, in, in my country that's for sure, and will, will much more easily take correction. So it's been a blessing to serve over here, kind of like a training ground, training wheels before going back home, Lord willing, someday, and, and facing the, the ring of fire back there. Sometimes there can be confusion whether or not someone who's preaching the gospel to people, the gospel of repentance and the Lord's coming judgment, oh my goodness, that means he hates gay people. Nope, I was one of you guys not long ago. I certainly don't hate you any more than I hate myself. So we're all sinners. We all must repent, put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We all must choose to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible, the inspired word of God, rather than our deceitful hearts. Our hearts are deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord's coming back in judgment. The Lord Jesus Christ one day will come back in judgment. It could be five minutes from now. So we must be ready. Praise the Lord.